This is a public inquiry that's been taking place since October and out of 130 seats in the public courtroom, there's only five or six people there sometimes, but this week the courtroom was packed, there was a media frenzy, and we got to see some disease data, some site-specific disease data released for the first time. Dr. Miller testified and told us that uh, this virus, this pathogen, salmon leukemia or marine anemia or a parvo virus uh, is a prime suspect in the mortality of 27 million Fraser, in, uh, Fraser River sockeye in one year. Now, if, Ms. if Dr. Miller's thesis is correct, then that could be a major concern for the decline of wild salmon in British Columbia. And she also revealed that uh, the government, the Canadian government, has not given her any money, any funding to continue her research. That's a scandal. This is a, a scientist who we think should be the scientist of the year and her research has been muzzled and it's also been uh, not funded. Now you were talking about raising funds to actually allow her to do some research on the fish farm salmon. What, where's that going? Dr. Miller yesterday told us that uh, she did a proposal for only $18,750 to test farmed Atlantic salmon. That proposal was refused the Canadian government didn't give her a measly $18,000. So within, within an hour, the wild salmon people had stepped up to the plate and they'd uh, given over $3,000 uh, within an hour. Um, by the end of the evening, we had $5,000. And I think right now we have maybe $7,000. So we're almost half the way there to the goal of um, funding Dr. Miller's research. She wants to test farmed Atlantic salmon for this new pathogen, this virus, this salmon leukemia, just to test to see if salmon farms are a source of this, this problem that is affecting maybe 30 million Fraser sockeye. So it's, it's a question that needs to be asked and Dr. Miller has been not given access to those Atlantic salmon farms. Dr. Miller's uh, testimony was astonishing. Um, I, I didn't expect she would go so far, but she basically said she's found a virus that it appears to be weakening and killing the majority of the Fraser sockeye. And she went to Genome BC and asked if she could use funds that they had given her to try to identify this virus, and they said no, they felt uncomfortable. And she went to DFO and asked if she could try to find this virus with money that they had given her, and then they said no. And furthermore, they said, actually, the funding that you have been getting is in jeopardy because it doesn't fit our policy. So at the end of it, she said she has no money to work on sockeye. Uh, the $25 million that's going to this public inquiry really should be going to her work because in all of this, you have a scientist who says she's found a virus that's killing and weakening the majority of the Fraser sockeye. That's the question. That's what we're dealing with here. We, we, we want to know. Uh, what's killing the Fraser sockeye and why they've bounced back. So uh, it, it really is a detective story because whatever we, whatever we look for has to fit quite a complicated pattern. It has to only affect the sockeye, first of all, that go north out of the river through Campbell River area past all the salmon farms. The, the salmon that are going to the south, the Fraser sockeye that are going to the south, have actually been increasing over the last 18 years. And it, it has to be something that started in approximately 1996. And it, it has to be something that is, is difficult to uh, identify. Um, because even though these fish have been dying by the hundreds of thousands on the, in, in the riverbanks where people can see them, pathologists have looked at them and, and can't figure it out. And so all of her work, reading the um, switches that go on and off in cells, say that they're fighting a virus. And when she looks at how the cells are responding to this virus, it appears to be a retrovirus. It appears to be cancer-causing. Um, it appears to be centralized in the brain part of it. And all of this is very similar to a virus that has been raging in the Chinook farms, we know, all during the 1990s. And interestingly enough, the key researchers who worked on that virus were on a panel, Dr. Craig Stevens and Dr. Michael Kent. And they started to back away from it. They're like, oh, no, we didn't see tumors. Uh, we really don't know what it was. Uh, we don't think it's a virus. These are the guys that named it, the salmon leukemia virus. They put it through screens, they, they, they measured its buoyancy, and they concluded it was a virus, and they're backing away from it now. Um, so it, it's, 
it's very disturbing and it's, it's very clear to me, and it has been for quite a while, but it's astonishingly clear now that if we want wild salmon, it really is up to us. Dr. Miller gave all she could and we really need to see to it that, that she's allowed to um, continue this work and, and she's not, I mean she was escorted out of the building by two large men with earpieces, not, not even allowed to do more than smile in passing. So <laughs> it doesn't give you a sense of confidence that there's a free flow of information. What are your feelings regarding what some of the other scientists have told us, both pro and con, I guess, the, uh, the uh, effect that fish farms might be having on the, on the, on the sockeye? Um, I think it's quite frustrating for the audience sometimes because there's lots of uh, disagreements on the panel. You know, one scientist may say one thing, another scientist says the other perspective. But certainly when Dr. Miller was on the stand, she was very clear on, on her position that uh, this virus could be the cause of the decline of Fraser River sockeye. I think that was the, the clearest signal we've heard in the last 10 months. The clearest... Um, potential for one single cause to be the, the decline of uh, Fraser River sockeye. There's a whole host of uh, potential explanations for the decline of Fraser River sockeye, but Dr. Miller's thesis uh, to me and to many in the audience seemed to be the most credible and certainly worthy of investigation. One, the thing that was so distressing to me this morning is a public database. So. Um, uh, four times a year the provincial government was sending inspectors out to these farms and collecting freshly dead fish and uh, a vet who's been sitting here through the hearing opened these fish up and he examined their organs and he organized that data uh, very very well in, in a database and uh, we're not allowed to see that and we paid for it. If the fish farming industry has nothing to hide then that database should be free. The fact that the province is running interference and saying, ah, oh, no, actually, we don't want that release. It's okay for you guys to get the, uh, the you know, the version that we've all worked on. Uh, that speaks hugely to me. Of course, I have seen that database, and so I'm operating under some sort of knowledge here. Uh, I, I hope that what we're watching is just a procedural issue and that it will come out, but. Um, this is a public inquiry about a public resource uh, regarding public information that we paid for. Uh, a BC Supreme Court trial that I did a few years ago and won made it clear that they do not actually own their fish because they were reclassified from farms to a fishery. And so nobody has any right actually to keep this data from us. But it's interesting that it's the provincial government that is doing this. From my watching, it didn't look to me like the uh, lawyers for the province or for the feds are actually really trying to support any real uh, findings. You know, it's uh, more like they're trying to do damage control. Yeah, I, I hate to agree with uh, John Cummins, the Conservative MP, but uh, he called the Cohen Commission this inquiry a farce. And uh, some of the scenes we've witnessed this week with uh, the lawyers for the federal government and the province representing Her Majesty the Queen have uh, served to back up the the belief that this commission has been set up uh, to protect the industry, to protect public scrutiny, to stop the release of disease data, and to argue for these Norwegian-owned salmon farming companies and against the public interest. A case uh, was made today, this morning, by the province lawyer representing Her Majesty the Queen. Um, she argued uh, that the public interest was served by the, the non-disclosure of disease data, uh, which, which is an illogical argument, but this is a case study where the, the province, the government is arguing that it's in the public interest that the public don't know what is happening on salmon farms. And her logic was that if salmon farming disease data is released to the public, it will have a chilling effect on other industries that are farming pigs and cows and sheep. So if we release salmon farming disease data, according to her argument, the other industries farming other animals in British Columbia and Canada 
uh, will refuse to give access to disease data. So it it's makes you wonder what type of diseases are on salmon farms and in other industries. So I think uh, the arguments that are on display and the way the commission lawyers and the province lawyers are trying to shield the industry uh, really does leave a bad taste in the mouth. Um, one of the very interesting things that's going on here is the pink salmon, the chum salmon, and the Harrison sockeye all have a similar life history. And that is right after the hatch, they leave the river and they enter the ocean. And uh, whereas the other sockeye and the chinook and the coho rear in the lakes. And so we have a circumstance that's happening right now where wild adult spawning generation salmon are passing salmon farms and entering the rivers and entering these nurseries. They are, are, they are an immediate conduit and vector for any pathogens that are on these salmon farms. And if the government and the Cohen Inquiry and the salmon farming industry really wants us to believe that there are no diseases being transferred from their farms into the nurseries of, of the greatest fishery resource this province has, then they just need to show us that database.